All right. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. So we have Carrie here today. She is a uh, graduate of the Loyal Method Coaching Program, and I'm super excited to have her here. Hi, Carrie. Good afternoon. Um, welcome. Welcome. I love these chats. I love talking about women who've had transformations, who've experienced things, who've had aha moments, and I know you have had quite a few. Um, so happy summer to you. I know it's mid-June uh, as we're recording this right now. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Carrie, a little bit about you, where you're from, your family, and then we'll kind of get into, you know, your experience here. Sure. A little bit about me. I am a military wife who recently moved to the East Coast, and um, I have three children. And one has successfully been launched from the house, and but I have um, quite an age gap between one and two. So I have my two younger children are um, elementary school age, and I've been homeschooling them um, for the past four years. So. Um, Anyhow, that's it. So I'm a stay at home mom and I work a lot, but not for money. <laughs> I work for hugs. <laughs> Bus busiest, uh, most difficult job uh, in the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that needs more credit given to all of the mamas out there. So um, hard hardest job there is really, truly. Um, well, welcome, welcome. It's so lovely to see you and, and chat with you. So why don't we just kind of dive in? I know, let's just see you, Carrie. Um, you came into this world, okay, like a, right around December of last year. So, all right, so let's talk, let's talk last year. Let's talk maybe even in the years prior. What would you say some of your biggest challenges were with your own relationship with food, well-being, wellness, weight, um, and you know where where were you? I would say pre-December. Yes, pre-December. So I felt that I just love food. I just enjoy it. I enjoy it all the time. I enjoy eating it. I enjoy looking at it. I enjoy preparing it. <laughs> I enjoy giving it to others. And um, that wasn't a problem when I was um, surrounded by a very hack active um, military community. And part of being in the military is part of being physically fit. And even though my husband's the one in the military and not me, um, I made friends with um, ladies that were in the military. And I thought, oh, if they can run three miles, I can run three miles too. If they can do a half marathon, I can do a half marathon too. So I had a really supportive community and I really enjoyed my food and I enjoyed the activity that I had um, with that community. And it seemed to balance out. I seemed to be a healthy weight, a healthy lifestyle. It was really great. And then, um, COVID hit and some stressors came upon that. Not, not that COVID was a huge stressor, but it did restrict my community that I could be involved in. And um, I started eating more <laughs> and maybe, maybe not necessarily eating, um, eating more junk food or anything like that, but I know that my activity significantly declined. Um, and um, I took on some greater greater responsibilities at home and my stress just kept on going up and up and up. And I didn't really realize the, how the increase of stress was happening other than I kept on buying the next size up in clothes. And, and I just thought, okay, this isn't good. This will just be it for a time but it has just kept going and going. So lots of stress in your life. Um, how were those cravings that you had? Cause I know that was one that we spoke about a lot and also one that ended up being a big win of yours, but we'll get there. Sure. Sure. Um, first the cravings were, um, 
ice cream is my definite go-to most favorite dessert in the world. And um, I, you know, would have, instead of dessert, maybe once a week, I would have dessert every evening. And then it was, oh, I'll have a lunchtime cookie for dessert and then I'll have an evening dessert. And then it started going to, oh, I'm, you know, feeding my kids breakfast. We go do schooling. They get hungry for a mid, mid morning snack because they're growing like crazy. So they're always hungry. And I would, I would, you know, grab a handful of, of chocolate chips and, and stuff for my morning snack to kind of get me through. And then I would have that cookie for lunch. And then I was having dessert three and four times a day. <laughs> and then, and I couldn't stop. I couldn't not have something. And that just seemed really weird. And so in my mind, my negative thought was, well, you just don't have very good self-control. I mean, you can have good self-control in other areas. I could have it in disciplined exercising. I could have it in um, other areas of my life. But, but regarding this food, it was just like, it was like another me. I couldn't stop the cravings. I just couldn't stop eating. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that those seemingly uncontrollable cravings um, also sort of were happening around the same time that you said, and I remember you telling me this because I'm also a former uh, marathon runner, that you were running a lot. I think you did half marathons. And I believe you said you ran upwards of like 500 miles in 2020 and you kept gaining weight. Yeah. And this is so significant because of this notion that women have to just do excess cardio. And the, and this is what I believed too, when I was running half marathons thinking I could just outrun everything. And, and, and I did not change my weight physically by doing running too. Um, so many women have this notion, oh, I can just outrun. I just have to sweat it off. I just got to go for a run. Like Sure, that's great cardio for your heart. It's not necessarily going to do you any service when it comes to weight loss. And um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. And we're not here to really talk about that, but I think it's really interesting that 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 was something that you were challenged with for sure. Um why or what what did you try? What was happening for you? So you ran. What are what else did you kind of try at some point when you're like, okay the weight's coming on. I can't get it off. I'm running, running, running. Like what, what, what was not, what did you try? And like, what was kind of like hard about those particular efforts? Sure. Well, my go-to was definitely running or exercising. Um, and so I would run and then I would do, um, some, uh, weight training, which is great. Um, but I would also, you know, do that with a handful of chocolate chips too. <laughs> um, I, you know, tried drinking a lot more water, all good things. I would try meal planning, all good things. I tried um, accountability with some friends. Um, I would try um, depriving myself of items like, okay, I'm not going to buy this ice cream anymore. I'm not going to have it in the fridge. I would um, try removing it from the house, from my reach, from my knowledge. <laughs> I um, tried a little bit of um, fasting or fasting for a certain period of time and then eating. So I just anything, it seems like anything and everything is what I tried. Um, I did look into other weight loss programs as well. Uh, but just really couldn't commit to actually leaving the house and, and doing the work outside the home. And so those were, those were areas that I tried to like fix myself. Got it. So you, you, you came and joined the loyal method coaching program last December right before the crazy holiday season. Talk to us a little bit about what stood out for, for you in terms of, I guess, first, why this program is different. And two, 
what, what made you join at that point in time? I think that's a big, um, that shows a lot in terms of your mindset and your readiness for a solution, because that could have been an excuse so easily for yourself. Oh, it's the holidays. I'll, I'll just wait. Right? Mm-hmm. I'll just wait. So tell me what stood out for you. Certainly. Well, um, maybe what you didn't realize is that December is a birthday month for me. And so, you know, with birthday months, usually people are like, okay, we'll have new beginnings, you know? And so, um, but I had realized and what I failed to mention just previously is I had gone to my doctor and, um, they had a weight loss program (laughs) and where you can go and see, um, talk with, a nutritionist, talk with your doctor, get your blood work done, all that kind of stuff. And I, um, I did that, but, um, didn't really have accountability with that. So I, everything I learned, I learned some really good, good things with that, but it, the weight just kept on getting on and on and on. I would just get heavier. My clothes, I would still feel like, oh, I need to buy another size up. And so by December hitting and this realization, I'm, I'm one more year older. <laughs> Do I really want to see this continual progression for the next year? And I really didn't. And there's always a Christmas. There's always a holiday party. There is always going to be something that I think in our minds, you know, will get in the way. We'll, we'll wait for a better time. And I just thought there I've been waiting for a better time for over a year. There is not a better time. And so that's how I came into it was, okay, I, there is no good time. There's no good time to start good habits. It's going to be hard. It's going to be work. Um, but how can I, and, and with the support of my husband as well, um, you know, we, we both had some questions and concerns. And so we both talked to you. How is this going to be different? And um, for me, when I find success is when I have accountability and when I have people who um, can surround me and I'm not doing it on my own. And that's the difference that I was very attracted to within the program. Awesome. Awesome. What so, so again, like I, and I, I do, I do remember that conversation. What kind of hesitations did you have fears? Did you have, or did your husband have in terms of, um, joining like nervousness and in investing or, or getting your husband on board in that conversation? That's am- amazing. And I, and I commend you for, for that, having your conversation with him and, and having him ask me questions. So you know, what, what, what were some of those hesitations or, or nervousness or fears that you did have and how'd you overcome them? Right. Well, I think the biggest fear was, is this really going to work? I've tried everything. Um, other, um, you know, there's other programs out there and they all work for a time, but why, why would this be any different? Why, why would this work for some, you know, and then just not work later? Like, I don't is it sustainable? I guess that's the question. Is mm-hmm. it sustainable? Um, having the support of my husband is great. My husband does not have these issues that I am. He actually is on the opposite end of the spectrum, which is very frustrating to me <laughs> because he has to eat more than 2000 calories a day just to sustain his own body weight. His metabolism is, is so high and he's older than me. <laughs> And does not have a gut and, and, um, does not have the food issues that I have. And so he just doesn't understand it, but he is super supportive in that he's willing to, um, you know, try new recipes, um, eat healthier overall, you know, for his own health and that sort of thing. But yes, my biggest fear was, is this going to work? And then there is the financial investment. How, you know, is this, is this really worth it? What, you know, is it really going to pay off? Um, is the information that I'm getting 
is that something that's sustainable? Um, and is the community really what it's going to be? Be like, I don't know. I don't know. And yeah. now, yeah. So, so, so clearly, you had a conversation with him, and then you and he had a conversation with me which is awesome. I think a lot of women need to speak to their spouses before they invest and some will make decisions on their own and some will not. And, you know, either which way you nailed it. Sometimes women have partners who do not understand what they're going through, whether it's the weight or whether it's the emotional component to food, either which way they don't get it. They don't understand yet, yet he still supported you even without understanding the full picture of what you're going through or what is necessary for you to make the changes. And I think that's awesome. How, how, how did that happen? And, and sort of how did you guys overcome the fears of maybe not getting a return on your investment, so to speak? Well, that's, <laughs> I, I feel the investment is still paying. Um, the information, the, um, the accountability, the um, the mindset changes that I have. It's not, oh, 12 weeks and it's done. It's, I, I revisit the information. I revisit um, the um, talks and encouragement. I revisit the recipes. I, you know, it's not just a one and done type of thing. I feel like this can be lived out over and over and over again. So I don't, um, I don't see this as well, it didn't work. So too bad, you know, I, I see this as like, okay, I can see improvements. I, there are tangible, um, measurable um, improvements that I have made in my mind, in my body, um, and it's still paying off. So that's, that's. I love it. And I wanna <laughs> talk to you about those results that you're most proud of. I'm curious, without having those tangible, measurable improvements and all the things that you're saying are still paying off, at the time you made your decision, how did you overcome the fear? How did you allow yourself to lean into the fear and be like, I'm going to do this? Probably because I, um, I, uh, how do I, I just did. <laughs> I jumped the line. I, you know, I went over the edge. I took it and I just took the, took the leap. Um, I had also experienced a recent um, move from the West coast to the East coast. I didn't have a lot of friends. And if this is a group that I can connect with in one area of my life, maybe I would make a friend from it. I mean, I was just that desperate. And you did. And I know you did. You told me. <laughs> I was just that desperate um, and, and uh, I was rewarded, you know, with my efforts in making that leap. So I, I love it. Talk to me about all of those juicy things that we were talking about before we hit record, but what, <laughs> what are some of those results? What are those measurable improvements, mind, body? What are you most proud of? Well, definitely um the change in mindset and the um uh, we call it like i would call them the negative voices in my head um that i didn't know were constantly playing and, until i was challenged to think about them <laughs> and within the community group i realized someone would say something and they would and i would say oh I have that voice too, but I never, I never recognized it. I never heard it. Um, I never heard it put that way before. Um, so one of the areas uh, I'll, I'll share my aha moment as regarding a change in mindset happened um, regarding my hair. And um, during COVID, my hair grew out and it's beautiful. And my husband loves long hair. And I got lots of comments for my long hair. And they just said, this is, you know, your hair is so beautiful. And I would get lots of comments and I would really appreciate that. But somewhere in my mindset, 
I had a change in um, people are only commenting on my hair because there wasn't anything else to comment about in my body. Like, oh, you're looking really, you know, thin lately or something, you know, that I would have loved that comment too, but that wasn't, the, that wasn't reality. <laughs> and so my, my thinking was, I can't cut my hair. If I cut my hair, I'm not going to be beautiful. If I cut my hair, I'm not going to get any compliments. And if I cut my hair, I'm not going to have any friends. And it was just, doesn't seem right when I say it out loud, but that was the negative thinking in my brain was I can't cut my hair. In reality, my hair is getting longer. I'm getting headaches. I can't keep it up. Um, it doesn't look as nice. <laughs> and so finally, probably maybe week three into the program, I thought, this is silly. I have this negative voice that I am not going to have friends if I cut my hair. This is silly. So I went and made a hair appointment and I got like six, eight inches cut off, which you can't, I mean, it's fairly long. So think of how long it was. Um, and I just felt with that hair coming off, those negative voices came off. I still had friends. People still loved me. People were still going to encourage me in this journey. People were still going to, they didn't, I didn't lose any friends because I cut my hair. Um, and they didn't love me any less because my hair was shorter, but that was some of a change in mindset where, I, where I, I, somehow I, I just had these negative voices and they weren't telling me truths about myself. So, yeah. Yeah. What other results that you achieved that, that you're proud of? Have you yes. Like to share? Yes. I actually made a list because I think sometimes we forget where we were and then where we are or what could have been and, and coming and going. So the first thing I noticed uh, definitely in week two, as you have this 12 week program and, and, I'm, you know, frantically trying to do the best I can, you know, with, with the time that I'm given to, to do the reading and the, and the mindset changes. But the first thing I noticed was a better quality of sleep. And the only reason I really noticed it is because I wear a Fitbit and wearing it to bed. And I mentioned that in some of the, our uh -huh. conversations. And I just thought, well, that's really strange, <laughs> but it was a significant increase in the trapping. I, I would just feel rested. I would feel more rested and that impacts your stress level <laughs> as well. It right? sure does. So I would say that was the number one thing. And you might just think, oh, she's just crazy. You know, maybe she just has bad, you know, sleep habits or something. I really didn't. <laughs> I really do sleep about eight hours and every night and stuff, but the quality went up. So it wasn't the quantity in the sleep, the quality went up and I am a numbers person. So anything that is tangible, I just grabbed onto and went, okay, this is kind of strange. I can't figure it out, but I'm going to say that. Definitely my quality of sleep has gone up. Um, after the 10 day cleanse, which is in about the two, three week mark, I came to a realization that I am addicted to sugar. I didn't think I was, I, I really didn't think I had a problem with it. And I really didn't understand, um, how much sugar was in food, even after going to a nutritionist for an entire year. I didn't understand how um, certain vegetables and greens could really counteract <laughs> the sugar that goes into, into my body. How do I stop these cravings? Um, and I wasn't having the intense cravings. I'm thinking, this is weird. This, how can you not have intense cravings? I've had these all the time. I can almost measure them. Um, not saying they went away completely. They didn't. <laughs> but um, I didn't have to grab for a handful of chocolate chips. And I just didn't even, at some points, I, I would go through the whole morning and then realize, wow, I didn't, I didn't have anything. I didn't have any sh sugar and stuff, but I, I was significantly decreasing the crackers and the chips and the bread and which I didn't, I didn't 
think in my mind is sugar at all um, or quick carbs or anything like that. Um, along with that, I notice a significant decrease in inflammation in my aches and my pains in the morning. I just felt like an old lady getting up and um, before, and as, as the, I worked my way, you know, as I'm going through the program, I could just pop out of bed. It was, it was like, this is strange. I have not, I have not had this experience for at least two years to not walk out of bed and having bad lower back pain and, and so forth. So um, my digestive issues, I'm we all have them. <laughs> they smoothed out as well. And I um, was very appreciative for that. So that got better. Also, one of the things I used to have afternoon naps. I mean, my kids could see the glaze go over my eye. They would put a blanket on me on the couch and I would be out for an hour and a half or two hours. I could not stay awake. And I attributed that to um, sugar highs and then crashing like right after lunch, you know, and my desserts, my lunch desserts and stuff. I would, I couldn't keep my eyes open. Um, going through the program, those afternoon naps went away. I just, I was able to function all day. And I just hadn't had that um, experience for at least a year or two and stuff. Um, definitely cravings significantly decreased. Um, definitely a decrease in you know, indigestion problems, stomach issues. Um, by the end of the program, I had decreased a whole clothing size. And, and I know people always want to, you know, they want to know real big numbers, like, and, you know, and weight and stuff, but my measurements, I took body measurements and I was, you know, you're encouraged to do that early on in the program. And so I did and wrote those down and, um, at the end of the program as well, took body measurements and was, and, um, I could see that was tangible, <laughs> But things were going, you know, things were going the right direction in my mind and in my body as well. And, um, and then stress, we had, I talked to a lot of, a lot of my issues had to do with um, high stresses. And that's why I was eating. Um, I had kept ice cream in the freezer and in our freezers located in our garage. And I would find myself walking into the garage, just walking into the garage, wanting to go to the freezer, wanting to open it. <laughs> I'm like, why am I here? Why am I in the garage? Well, I was upset about something, you know, maybe the day wasn't going as I had planned. Maybe the children weren't as um, cooperative in their learning of my wonderful teaching styles, <laughs> but I would find myself in the garage. And that was, that started, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily have to open the freezer, but it was just like, I would find myself in the garage like 20 times a day. And then I'm like, wow, if you're, I ate a popsicle every time I found myself in the garage, no wonder I was, you know, gaining weight and not feeling good and having sugar crashing and, you know, sleeping um, in the middle of the day and not staying awake. So, but all of those, um, all of those things were successes in my mind. Um, you know, better quality of sleep, obviously um, better mindset, coming to the realization that I am addicted to sugar. And how does that, how is that gonna play out in the future? Now that I know this information, how, how do I respond to that? Awesome. But I'm really just feeling better overall. Um, and that's, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on all of your successes. Um, it's funny we get I get these questions a lot. What what is your success rate? That's is a question I get from a lot of women sometimes. And and usually my answer is what does success mean to you? And I think it's really important to reflect on. Success comes in all shapes, sizes, tangible, intangible, 
measurable, immeasurable um, numbers or quality, right? Quantitative, qualitative, and success is measured so many different ways and can be numerous things. And you just had a like slew of them, both qualitative and quantitatively. So congratulations. Um, so wonderful, Carrie. I want to just uh, end with a question to pose um, to you in terms of what would you tell another woman in your shoes right now, if you were to come across somebody in your shoes or who was in your shoes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm, I'm still living it, <laughs> but taking the jump and not giving up and doing the work and having the support of the Loyo community um, is tremendous. Not all of our stories are the same. You know, someone's gonna lose 20 pounds real easy off the bat. Other people, it's gonna be, maybe their victories are in their health and how they feel and not necessarily in the scale. But with each one of those, this isn't something that's just one and done. I believe that the changes and the aha moments that I've had, this is a continual process. Like if you want to be healthy, you don't just be healthy just for a little while. You know, <laughs> you, you, you're, this is a lifelong commitment. This is a lifelong journey. Um, but I'm not just, I'm not just doing this just for a minute. And then I'm like, oh, then I'm going to go back to my old ways. It's really finding a better habit and finding where my limitations are. Can I have an ice cream? Yes. Should I have 20 of them a day? No. <laughs> um, but this is really, it's possible. You will have success. Um, in various areas, like you said, intangible and non-tangible. I am a, I like to see numbers. I like, and so that's where I honed in um, and wrote down and documented, um, you know, my, my weight, my measurements, but also my mindset, what kind of things. Um, I also documented a lot of aha moments that, that maybe seem a little touchy feely, but um, helped and do help. And they continue to help me um, function day to day. And when I have stressors, um, how do I, how do I decrease that? Has my life really changed? No, I'm still a military spouse. I still homeschool my children. Um, but I believe that opportunities have presented itself where I've been able to take that stressful moment and use the tools that were that have been given to me, that I have learned, that I have learned from not only in the program, but from the community and taken those and um, change that stress or, or even maybe choose not to even take on the stress. If that's, I think sometimes we, we, you talk a lot about that. Like, is it, is this something that we should even carry, <laughs> carry around? Should we, should we still have? And so, um, and not have those stresses play out in food. You know, that's my go-to is my, was my food is my go-to. And so anyhow, I don't, I'm hoping I'm answering your question, but to the, to the, to the other me that's out there, can this really, can this really help? Yes, it can. And it'll help in more areas in your life than you really think possible. And it's not just me. There's other, the community, they have these aha moments too. And then you're like, oh, I'm not the only one. And that that is so encouraging. I find that happens so much. It happened this past week. There were numerous people who were, they just, they were just like, I am so glad I made the decision to hop on tonight. I, I and, it, and it just kept happening. Or some people were watching it live stream, like in our group because they were new and they were scared to kind of be in there and actually then hopped on to the actual call to show their face and say, Hey, I'm here too. You know, I'm right with you. 
they're like, I'm with you, girl. Like, I got you. I, I'm here. I'm feeling the same way. And I, it's so, that community is so important. Um, so thank you so much for sharing, Carrie. I, you know, I love your story. I love seeing you. I love seeing your, your wins. I love you documenting those wins. It's great um, because we do forget. And congratulations on, on just all of your success. If anyone has questions, just definitely pop them in the comments. I'm sure Carrie would be happy to answer as well. Um, you can pop them over there and and, and tag us both if you'd like. And um, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Carrie, thank you so much for your time today and have a wonderful, wonderful summer. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. So welcome, take care.